Hello students, we are going to review in class exercise 4 for acid-base equilibrium. So first we are going to look at question 1. You were told that you have a magic demonstration where the water is mixed to produce um, milk uh, making use of the following reaction. So you have methanol here reacting with sulfite. Uh, in the presence of water to give you uh, this particular compound and uh, OH well, minus as the byproduct. Okay, so you notice that the water here um, is put with an inverted comma and then the milk here is being put with an inverted comma. So they don't really mean water as in pure water and then milk as in the milk you drink in everyday life. Yeah, it merely refers to the appearance of the uh, solution. So they appear to be water-like, but they are not water. Okay, so of, of course the milk is not milk. Lah. Okay, so um, later on, you were told that uh, acceleration proceeds because it produces hydroxide ions. The pH rises and then if a buffer is present, this rise is um, gradual at first, eventually when the buffer is exhausted, the pH rises quickly. So if magnesium 2 plus is present, then you are going to produce magnesium hydroxide. And then uh, this is the case when the ionic product exceeds the KSP and then precipitation occurs until uh, ionic product equals to KSP. You were given the procedure. So uh, over here, Steps 1 to 3 are prepared ahead of the demonstration and then step 4 uh, in front of the audience. If you take a look at uh, steps 1 and 2, uh, you notice that you have uh, two solutions, A and B, and you also notice that solution A, uh, which is sulfite, is actually the conjugate acid, sorry, it's the conjugate base of Solution B, which is hydrogen sulfite. Okay, so I'm going to I'm just going to write out the equation, HSO three uh, uh, minus. So um, if I'm going to write out an equation, it will look like this: equilibrate to give you sulfite uh, plus H plus. So if we call hydrogen sulfite the acid, then uh, sulfite will be called the conjugate base. Okay, uh, how do I know that uh, sulfide is a conjugate uh, base of hydrogen sulfide? Well, uh, they differ by a H+. plus. So this is the telltale sign um, you have to look at. And in addition, you were told that if a buffer is present, so that means that uh, steps 1 and 2 probably uh, produces the buffer. Yeah, so this whole question is about uh, buffer. Yeah, and then moving on, you were told that uh, 20 seconds later, um, after step 4 is being carried out, you get a cloudy solution and then after that, um, this is due to the precipitation of magnesium hydroxide. You were given some information, the Ka of the hydrogen sulfide and then uh, you were given the Ksp. Okay, and then um, because over here we mentioned uh, buffer, so naturally you would expect a definition question, kind of like a recall question to be asked. Yeah, so based on um, what you understand, how do you define um, a buffer? Okay, you can refer to your notes uh, or you can just um, off the top of your head uh, uh, tell us that a buffer solution basically um, is a solution which resists the change in uh, pH when a small amount of acid or base is added. Yeah, so if you are already very clear, you don't really need to do a lot of revision on this. Okay. You have a part B uh, calculates the pH of the buffer solution in the beaker after step two. Yeah. So in this case, we are looking at a buffer solution. You were given the concept, sorry, you were given the volume and then the concentration as well. Yeah. So this is not too difficult a calculation. So I'm just going to do my um, calculation over here. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to apply the henderson hasbert equation. Yeah. So we have pH equals to uh, pKa uh, plus log to the base 10, okay? The concentration of the salts over the concentration of the acids. Uh, you got to be aware that because I'm uh, adding equal volume uh, for both, uh, therefore the concentration of the salts and the acid will half. 
Okay, so uh, in that case, um, on the top, because uh, I'm looking at the concentration of hydrogen sulfide, sorry, the salts, this should be the salt. So um, sulfides um, over the concentration of hydrogen um, sulfide. Yeah, so I'm really looking at um, minus log to the base 10, uh, 1.02 times 10 to the power minus 7, and then um, plus log base 10. Uh, because the concentration will be halved, so therefore um, I'm looking at um, 0 0.050 um, uh, divide by uh, 0 0.200. But uh, you might also realize that it doesn't really matter because the ratio will remain the same. Uh, but I think it is um, important for you to showcase your understanding that uh, the concentration will halved. Okay, when you add um, two solution uh, with the same volume. Okay, then uh, if you punch your calculator, uh, perform a quick calculation, you should get pH is equals to 6.39. Yep, okay, then uh, that's part B. And then um, for part C, required to write one equation to show how this buffer performs its function in A. Uh, keywords over here one equation uh, how this buffer performs its function in, a in the process of delaying the appearance of the white PPT if you uh, forget about the story uh, you need to recognize that in the process of the reaction hydroxide ions is being produced okay and because hydroxide ion is being produced therefore in this particular buffer it is the acid which will react with the hydroxide ions so that will be the equation you should be writing so therefore i should be writing hydrogen sulfide plus oh minus and then um full arrow okay remember this is not an equilibrium arrowhead because uh we are representing a complete reaction and in the course of reaction i get sulfides um plus uh, h2o yeah, remember to write in your H2O because um, usually uh, for assessment, for some of the assessments which I have marked, students tend to forget to write H2O. Okay, yeah. Part D is probably um, the hardest of the, of the many parts. Yeah, you are supposed to show that the white PPT first appears when the pH is 9.18. Yeah. So in this case, uh, the question is, it, it's made such a way that um, we are not asking you to calculate um, the pH when the PPT starts to appear. Because uh, that will mean that you kind of work in the unknown. So it's a bit difficult and um, you might not have a good sense. So when we ask you to show, uh, we are kind of like telling you the answer. So this is the answer. But um, we would like you to perform... Um, some interpretation um, of the information given to you uh, in the questions uh, in front. So that's why such questions are often called database because we give you a set of data and then you decide uh, what are the data that's important for you. Okay, yeah. So the probably the very first thing you want to focus on is um, you want to look at the KSP of magnesium hydroxide. Okay, so maybe. Uh, let us write out the KSP expression for magnesium hydroxide first. So that will be uh, KSP uh, equals to uh, the concentration of Mg2+, plus, okay, and the concentration of OH- minus uh, squared. Uh, the KSP value is given to you earlier on. Yeah, so it should be relatively straightforward. You should know it as 5.66 times 10 to the power minus 12. Okay. What about the concentration of uh, Mg2 plus? So if I'm going to sc scroll back a little bit, you'll notice that uh, over here, right? I'm just going to highlight the volume. So we have uh, 100 cubic centimeters, 100 here, uh, 5 and 200. Yeah. So uh, in that case, the total volume is equals to 405 uh, cubic centimeters. Okay. So what I'm going to attempt to do is to... Uh, calculates the concentration of uh, magnesium 2 plus uh, in the solution. Okay, yeah, so I'll try to do that. So uh, I'm just going to use the empty space here. So the concentration of Mg2 plus 
okay is therefore equals to uh in our case here will be the volume so um that will be five um over or rather um maybe i make it easier um 2.00 divided by 1000 multiplied by 5 okay and then um this particular number right we need to um divide by um 405 because the total volume is 405 and then um we need to scale it back to 1000 okay and then um you realize that um over here i'm going to cancel off the 1000 yeah so uh essentially i will end up with 5 multiplied by 2 divide by 405 okay so i'm just going to copy this uh into here yeah so here i'm going to get um um 5 divide by 405 uh multiplied by 2 and then um of course the concentration of oh minus uh squared uh, so therefore from here uh concentration of oh minus is equals to uh if i punch my calculator i'm going to get 1.51 times 10 to the power minus 5 moles per dm cube okay then uh from here i think um it will be relatively straightforward because uh ph plus uh poh is equals to um 14 uh, of course we are assuming uh 25 degrees celsius if not um we can't do much so therefore ph is equals to 14 um minus uh log base 10 um or rather minus minus log base 10 um 1.51 times 10 to the power minus 5 okay so uh i'm going to get 9.18 so therefore i've shown um that uh the ph when the white ppt first appear is 9.18 yep Okay, so I hope um, it's not too daunting, and um, um, I won't say straightforward, but uh, requires a little bit of thinking. Okay, so first, okay, part E, state a solution, A, B, C, or D, uh, whose concentration you decrease in order for the white PPT to um, appear earlier. Okay, so I have um, A, B, C, and D. Yeah, so from here, right, um, if I want my... Um, ppt to appear earlier remember that the reaction produces oh uh, minus and it is the acid in this case hydrogen sulfide which reacts with the oh minus so if i want my ppt to appear earlier yeah in my buffer right i'm going to introduce less of the acid yeah therefore i'm going to pick a uh, solution b yeah, because the question asked me uh, to choose one of them where I would decrease the concentration in order for the white PPT to appear earlier. So therefore, I will need less acid to react with the OH minus. Yeah, so solution B will be the choice. Okay, then um, finally for part F, we were told that the procedure can be slightly amended as follows to produce tea instead of milk. Okay, so... Um, Steps 1, 2, and 4 are unchanged. Step 3, instead of solution C, I added 5 cubic centimeters of 3 nitro um, phenol indicator. Then you were told that the color um, in acidic solution is colorless, in um, alkaline solution is yellow. Working range is 6.7 to 8.7. You'll notice that the working range is less than 9.18. Okay, so uh, this is less than 9.18. Yep. Why is it called T? Probably because of the color in alkaline solution, which is yellow. Yeah. So question is, uh, you were told that milk appeared 20 seconds after step 4 was carried out. Uh, you were asked whether tea appears earlier, later, or also at 20 seconds. Because the working pH range is less than 9.18, I would expect tea to appear earlier. Okay. Yeah. Then for part G, Suggest another indicator you could use in place of 3 nitrophenol so that red wine, uh, red wine, so um, red in color, may be obtained. So if you go through your indicator list, um, you might remember that, oh, okay, um, one indicator which you are aware of with a working range, um, 
say between 8 to 10 is probably phenolphthalein. Yeah, make sure you spell your phenolphthalein correctly. So phenolphthalein is uh, spelled with a phenol and then um, pH and then thalein, T-H-A-L-E-I-N. Okay, so make sure you spell it correctly. Right, next we'll move on to um, question two. Yep, so for question two, uh, we give you a graph. So we have uh, hydroquinone is a hydroxy aromatic compound widely used as an industrial solvent, ionizes in two stages uh, shown above. We have two pKa's. Okay, and then uh, figure 2.1 shows how the fractions of uh, H2A, HA minus and A2 minus change with pH. Yeah, remember that this is fraction. Yeah, so we started off with 100% of H2A. As H2A decreases, you notice that um, proportionally uh, HA minus increases as well. Okay, and then um, when we move down to a certain amount, uh, A2 minus starts to appear as well. So there will be uh, a certain pH range when uh, you have all the three species um, appearing at the same time. Yeah. Okay, and then um, what you notice here is also um, the intersection point. Um, and this particular intersection point, um, if, you, if you take a look uh, quite closely, it, it occurs close to 0 0.5. Okay, very close to 0 0.5, although it's not exactly 0 0.5 due to um, the little bit amount of um, A2 minus um, being produced. Okay, yeah. Then uh, for part one, with reference to a relevant equilibrium equation, explain why the addition of sodium salts of uh, hydroquinone, um, which is uh, Na2A, to the mixture at pH 13 favors the formation of um, HA minus. Okay, so uh, if we are looking at this particular equilibrium, HA minus uh, equals equilibrate to give us uh, H plus plus A2 minus. Yeah, then you are probably aware that if I'm going to add this sorts, the presence of A2 minus suppresses the um, ionization of HA minus. Yeah, so in, in this case, it will shift the position of equilibrium to the left. Yeah, so I hope you you, you get to know um, um, you are able to use terms like suppresses the ionization uh, and the sudden surge in concentration of A2 minus pushes the position of equilibrium to the left. Yeah, so if you are familiar in using expression like this, it will help you a lot um, in your assessment and you don't really need to remember a lot of things because once you are familiar with um, expression like this and um, conceptually you are okay, uh, you don't really need to revise um, a lot for acid-base equilibrium. Yeah, next for part two on figure 2.1, you are asked to circle the intersection point which will enable you to determine the first acid dissociation constant. Um, hence, uh, calculate Ka1, leaving your answers to 3SF. So I think I've circled over here. Yeah, uh, because number one is uh, at the intersection point, we have um, equal amounts of H2A and HA minus. Okay, so I'm going to uh, circle this particular intersection point. If I zoom in a little bit, um, if I zoom in a little bit, right, you notice that this point appears at about um, 9.85. Okay, it's about here, 9.85. Okay, so therefore, uh, when I perform my calculation, uh, pH is equals to pKa1, which is equals to 9.85. Yeah, so I, I can quickly punch my calculator. Ka1 is therefore 10 to the power of minus 9.85, uh, which is equals to 1.41 times 10 to the power of minus 10 uh, moles per dm cube. And then um, for part three, FA1 is a 1 dm cube hydroquinone. So we deliberately make the question easier by giving you 1 dm cube. Okay, Con um, containing A2 minus and HA minus at pH 12. Okay, over here is pH 12. Okay, so it can be prepared by the following steps. I add um, 0 0.5 moles of um, hydroquinone into 1 dm cube of water, stir the mixture thoroughly. X grams of sodium hydroxide um, 
added the mixture in step one, stir thoroughly. So I'm going to use figure 2.1 to suggest the amount in moles of A2 minus HA minus present in FA1. Okay, so uh, remember, I need to achieve a pH of 12. Okay, I'm going to move back to the graph. Um, this is pH 12 over here. Okay, uh, I'm looking at uh, HA minus and A2 minus. Okay, so um, all I need to do is just to look at um, this particular point on the graph. Yeah, so if I'm going to shift up over here, is this is the point I'm looking at. And um, this is the point I'm looking at. Yeah, so you notice that this point is 0 0.74. Uh, this is fraction, uh, remember, it's fraction. It's not number of moles, okay? So be very careful. And then this is uh, 0 0.26. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, because the number of moles given is 0 0.5, so I'm going to take the fraction multiplied by 0 0.5. Yeah, so that, therefore the number of moles of A2 minus present is um, 0 0.74 multiplied by 0 0.5, I get 0 0.37 moles. Okay, and then uh, the number of moles of HA minus present, 0 0.26 multiplied by 0 0.5, I get 0 0.13 moles. Yeah, so we are asked to calculate x okay so uh, x is the um, mass of sodium hydroxide required to uh, produce um, the said buffer at ph 12 okay so uh, first of all right we know that uh, for h2a i will need to react completely with oh minus in order to produce ha minus okay so i need to produce um, all the HA minus I could first. Yeah, so I start off with um, 0 0.500 0, 0 moles of this, right? So uh, first of all, I need to produce 0 0.500 0, 0 moles of HA minus. Yeah, so this is a given. Then after that, from the 0 0.500 0, 0 moles of uh, HA minus, I need to react some of it with OH minus in order to produce A2 minus. And how many moles of A2 minus do I need to produce? I need to produce 0 0.37 moles of A2 minus. Okay, so therefore, the amount of um, HA minus which will react with OH minus to produce 0 0.37 moles of uh, A2 minus will be 0 0.37. Okay, so um, in summary, I will need 0 0.37 moles of OH minus here and 0 0.5 Zero, 0 moles of OH minus here. Okay, I will do a summation and what I'm going to get is 0 0.87 um, moles of OH minus. Okay, but remember that I'm supposed to calculate the mass of solid sodium hydroxide. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, the mass uh, of MaOH will therefore be 0 0.87 multiplied by 40.0. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get um, 34.8 grams. Okay, so please check your answers and see uh, whether you can get it. And um, uh, do highlight to me if um, uh, you're not very clear about the thought uh, processes. And then for part 5, explain um, with a relevant equation how FA1 acts as a buffer on the addition of a small amount of acids. Yeah, so again, um, for FA1, we have A2 minus and HA minus. So if I'm going to add acid, it will be the uh, base uh, which will react. So therefore, uh, I'm going to write it as A2 minus uh, plus uh, H plus, and I'm going to get um, HA minus. Okay, uh, if you wish to, you can just draw the structure of A2 minus, but in this case, um, uh, it doesn't really matter here. Yep, and then... Um, of course, question asks you to explain. So if I write the equation alone, I'm not exactly explaining. Yeah. So if you if you recall um, from your notes or uh, if you are already very clear about the concepts, uh, what you can how you can explain it is simply by using the Henderson Hasselberg equation. Okay. Because in the Henderson Hasselberg equation, um, the pH is actually dependent on the ratio of the salts. To acid. Okay, the salt over acid ratio is important. And because I have a large reservoir of the salts and the acid, uh, due to the small amount of H plus uh, being added, 
yeah, the change in the ratio of A2 minus to HA minus is neg negligible. And because the change in the ratio of A2 minus to HA minus is negligible, pH will not change appreciably. Okay, or you can say pH will remain relatively a constant. Yeah, okay, so uh, this uh, directly follow the, the kind of phrasing you expect from the notes. And then for part six, a new hydroquinone buffer was prepared using half the amounts of HA- and A2- present in A3. Explain without calculation which buffer will result in a greater pH change when the same or acid is added. Yeah, so I would expect the new buffer uh, will result in a greater pH change. Okay, why is that the case? Uh, because I have less amount of A2- and HA- as well. So therefore, the change in the ratio of A2- to HA- will be greater than that in 5. If the change in the ratio is greater, I expect a greater pH change. Okay, so that will be the end of um, our review for acid-base equilibrium in class exercise 4. Thank you.